Welcome everyone to this talk. So, yeah. I'm used to it. So, uh, I would like to present to you some of the, uh, so this work that we've been doing on uh, uh, incompressible language talks and in general on fluid mechanical systems. And just to give you some bit of motivation behind this work, so there is apparently an increasing interest in the control and simulation of distributed uh, uh, language systems, especially in the Portland Economic Framework. And this is because of its features, the unique features, for example, because it incorporates non conservative distributed uh, dynamical systems, it allows also for non zero energy exchange to the boundary of the spatial domain, and most importantly, which is a feature that's not uh, used. Uh, frequently in the protocol literature is that you represent the system more of a network of interconnected uh, subsystems. So for the motivation of the, uh, of the Portland's project, which uh, students are going to tell you more about in the next preliminary talk, so we would like actually to model a, a complicated system, which is the bird, the flight of the birds, uh, as a network of interconnected subsystems for the purpose of developing actually robotic birds. So you can imagine that in the in this for this very complicated system, you have uh, a rigid body, you have flexible bodies, you have the air flow interaction between all of these, and also the distributed joints and distributed sensors and actuators there. So it's a lot very complicated system, and the Portland Ordonian framework fits uh, perfectly for that. Uh, for this advanced application, for other advanced applications of the Portland Ordonian framework, there should be a differential geometric formulation. And so the reason for that is that this differential geometric formulation that allows actually very powerful conceptual advantages and also technical simplifications when dealing with the analysis and deriving the equations. And this can be done using uh, the exterior calculus formulation, which is, uh, was pioneered by Richard uh, Kahn and Rasmus uh, in the 19th century. And this is really uh, a state of the art method in flight means in general with the electrodynamics and particle physics. It's also by the work of uh, uh, Marsden and uh, Abraham, uh, I think early in the, in the first century, that they really used the uh, they introduced the exterior calculus formulations for geometric flow, fluid and solid mechanics. And it was a key ingredient in actually the development of the, the famous software of structure on the ground that uh, the Portland framework by the work of uh, Abraham and Bernard. So, so, what we did in the past uh, I think, uh, two years, we've been working on extensively on actually bringing also the exterior calculus formulation in the portal model of the fluid dynamic systems. And these are the, the previous three papers that are now published. And we've shown in this paper that using first principles, using really the group of diffeomorphisms starting and, uh, and its corresponding algebra, we can systematically derive the equations. For fluid dynamic systems, for compressible, incompressible, inviscid, or your equations and the viscous space, the under Stokes equation, on a generic spatial domain, which is modeled as a Riemannian manifold with a bound. So, no assumptions in its most general, generic case. We've modeled, we've shown how to model the fluid dynamic systems, and we've shown them in more of like this network approach. And so, there's a lot of usability to the different modules that were defined. In this work, Actually, so one, one, the next step that we're working on after this uh, model part was the discretization, and we were, uh, yeah, uh, we, we found out that actually the vet, in the discretization world or in the computational uh, engineering applications, the vector calculus is much more direct. So people working in research are working in, in these fields are much more proficient in vector calculus than in exterior calculus. So actually, we will open this work that we presented here in the, in the workshop and, uh, uh, and in this presentation actually to serve as a bridge between the vector calculus world and the exterior calculus world. So the contributions of this of this work was to really present a coordinate model of fluid analysis in the bottom of framework using both exterior and vector calculus. And we hope actually by showing both the vector calculus and the exterior calculus in a bit, uh, formulation next to each other one could appreciate actually the mathematical elegance of the uh, exterior calculus formulation. And really, the last uh, very important contribution of this work is actually it's a minimalistic representation of the, the work we've been doing. It's actually in this, or at least three papers, I don't know, take about, about 52 pages. Actually, so it's really summarizing these seven pages presented in the workshop. So it's 
really more of a, uh, an appetizer for whoever is interested in this work. So the, the rest of the, my presentation will go first talking about the portland Tony model of the incompressible matrix, given limited neglected practice. And this is different from what we actually derived. So we actually derived it from the same practice, but I want to show you first the, the end result that we reach after doing the transformation from the axial calculus to the vector calculus mutation, and then show you and then motivate you how we actually go back from the vector calculus to the axial calculus and how they compare to each other, and then present to you the incompressible matrix Stokes equations within an axial calculus from the end of the presentation. So, in this, in the incompressible matrix Stokes equation, so we have uh, the station uh, uh, domain, and then we have the vector field for, uh, describing the fluid flow. And we have, uh, uh, we assume, as, as I mentioned before, so we assume that this manifold could be a generic curved manifold. So it's a, it could be a, a generic spatia, uh, curved spatial domain, with assuming that there is also flow throughout the boundary. So we don't assume any tangential conditions on that boundary. The well known Dagger Stokes equation in vector calculus, I think yeah, most people will be familiar with this equation, with, the, with, the, with this term corresponding to the convective. Uh, force and this term correspond to dissipative forces of the system. The, the states of the system correspond to the, the mass density function and the velocity vector field. And omega here is the curl of the, of the vector field corresponding to the to this vector field in this case. It's incompressible in matrix stokes, so there were extra incompressibility condition restricting the space of, uh, of possible uh, vector fields to the ones that are only the version field. And this is the standard way of looking at the matrix. What we wish to present and we, we uh, focus on in the Portland Antonio model is to represent and put the Portland put the Major Stokes equation into this generic idea of interconnected subsystems where we have first an energy storage subsystem corresponding to the storage of the kinetic energy in this case of the system. We have a term or another subsystem that describes the situation of energy due to uh, viscosity. We have here uh, the Lagrange multiplier, which describes the nature of the pressure in this case, not being from a thermodynamic nature, but being, being uh, a mechanical system, a constrained mechanical system. And we also have the uh, induced boundary force. So, this is the generic way, and I would like to show you how this uh, portal Tony model would look both in the exterior and in the vector calculus way. Starting with the vector calculus way, so let's start with the energy storage. Right, so, describing the energy storage of the kinetic energy throughout the throughout the, uh, the station domain can be described by first looking at energy variables or the state variables, which correspond, as I said, to the uh, velocity vector field and the uh, uh, density uh, mass density function. So this is the uh, this case of vector field and this case of functions on the manifold. The kinetic energy defines the uh, Hamiltonian function, which is given by the uh, similar to half rule of the square in a more generic sense where G here represents the metric of the manifold, so if we have a now curved manifold, it would have a metric. And most of them, and very importantly, even if you have flat space, but you choose actually to do a more arbitrary uh, borders, different than Cartesian, for example, like spherical or polar borders, the metric will also have, uh, will also be non, uh, not equal to an identity metric, so like a uh, their identity function. So, and, and mu vol is the volume form. So this is the uh, kinetic energy of the system. To put it in the portland formulation, we need to define the co-energy of the co-state variables, which are given by the variation derivative of the energy of the Hamiltonian with respect to the energy variables. So in the case of the variation derivative with respect to the vector for the velocity, we get actually the momentum uh, vector field also. And with respect to the mass density, we get uh, uh, this half V squared term, which is Equivalent to the half of the square term, which is actually equivalent to the energy uh, density, the kinetic energy density, moving for the, the density. Uh, and you can show that actually, that the, with this definition of the energy variables, that the, the, the rate of change of the kinetic energy is simply given by the, uh, uh, this pairing, which actually, it's a, so the first part actually defines a pairing on vector fields, and the uh, second part defines a pairing on, on scalar functions, the final. So this is for the first subsystem, the energy storage subsystem. And the second part is actually the energy dissipation system. So we have an effort and a flow variable. The effort variable will correspond to the Cauchy shear stress tensor, which is a symmetric zero to tensor field uh, 
given by sigma number two here just for uh, for uh, for later purposes, we use it. And t zero two corresponds to the space of uh, zero two density fields on the map. As well known that the incompressible field of Cauchy stress tensor is assumed to be first symmetric with the balance of angular momentum and also depends on the velocity gradient. Uh, it's, it's well known, I think, in, for fluid dynamics that the velocity gradient is calculated and there's a well known uh, formula for that. But the problem is that how do you generalize this to a dynamic metric? And this is well captured by actually the new derivative of the metric. And this defines. Uh, uh, the symmetric, the symmetric part of the gradient, and in, in generic coordinates, you can, you can uh, the components of this uh, zero two tensor, which is also symmetric, can be shown in general by uh, using the covariant derivative. And if you go to Cartesian coordinates, which is the second line here, you recover the uh, one known formula known to be constant. The balance of energy between the Cauchy stress tensor and the new derivative of the metric, which is the effort of fluid variance for this. Energy dissipated subsystem is given actually by the, uh, uh, by the contraction operator contracting the, uh, these two zero two tensors, and we can easily show that this uh, relation is always great. this energy, this power balance is always greater than zero, which actually is exactly what this energy dissipation describes, which is the transfer, uh, uh, the transfer of the kinetic energy to the, uh, the dissipation of the kinetic energy to the uh, to the thermal image, which is not uh, incorporated in the, the last three ports, so I will start now with the first part, the energy storage and the energy density, uh, the energy dissipation, sorry. And we have three more open ports. And th this is one of the, uh, the, the very powerful uh, features of open Newtonian is that you can model open dynamical systems that could be interconnected later to other resources, which is the, the that's, this is what we hope to do for, uh, for the, for example, for the motivation of the bird fly model. So we have here uh, the Lagrange multiplier. So this is an open port that we need to specify the pressure and we can uh, eliminate the Lagrange multiplier using uh, well known methods. As for the, uh, uh, the boundary terms, so we have induced boundary due to the pressure and another induced boundary to the, uh, the energy uh, due to the viscous. Uh, uh, the dissipation into viscosity, and I'll show you later how this looks like. It would be actually much more simpler to show than the exterior guidance on the different types, but they are really limited. So I'll describe now five ports so the energy storage, the energy dissipation, the Lagrange multiplier, and the two boundary ports. All of these are connected at the heart of the program of the moment. It's the Stokes Dirac structure described here by this uh, uh, expression. Which simply relates all of the efforts and flow variables of the different forces together. And this is all in the vector uh, calc simulation, so the grad, the divergence operator, uh, the bold different the bold grad correspond to the, uh, the diversion degree operator, lots of tensor fields. And you have the, the, the effort and flow variables you can see them here, and we'll describe more details. So this is how it looks like. But now, now I want to show you now the exterior calculus. So, just in case there are uh, a lot of people, I guess, who are, that are not familiar with or not proficient with exterior calculus, so just a quick uh, recap or quick introduction if you don't know what differential forms are. So, differential forms in their most intuitive ways are the okay, most intuitive way to understand them as integrants, but of course, the formally they are uh, anti symmetric uh, zero k tensor field defined on the manifold. So that's the complicated way, but intuitively they are integrates. So they have zero form, which is you can define as input integrate on a point, which is evaluation on a point. Uh, you have one form that could be integrated on uh, any curves in the manifold. You have two forms that could be integrated on a surface. You have three forms that could be integrated on a form. In turn, so for if, if the dimension of, uh, of the manifold is given by n, for example, you always have that forms are given by less than or equal to n. So, you, in, for example, in two dimensions, you have only 0, 1, and 2 forms. In two dimensions, you have 0, 1, and 2, and 3 forms. The uh, people working in the vector calculus have always used forms in some way, but they usually have an identification actually between 1 forms and 2 forms into vector fields. So, and this is actually, these two are different in nature, and I'll come and do that later on. Uh, what are the operations in differential forms? So, one of the points that we actually make. Uh, Comment on in the end is that uh, 
Syria Galaxy is elegant to work for, and the reason for that is that you have a minimalistic number of operations. These operations, the first one is given by the batch product, and it corresponds in the metric this case to it unifies serial multiplication cross product and the dot product. We have also the exterior derivative operation at the one forms, which actually is, it unifies the drag theory and diff operations of vector fields. Some of the, uh, uh, the minimalistic again properties of the uh, uh, of the exterior derivative is actually the importance, so you apply the exterior derivative twice you get zero, and this corresponds to the well known vector calculus formulations. And most importantly, also the likeness rule is well defined for uh, and unified for series of for series of tension forms. And they correspond to all of these cases in vector calculus. So this is one way of the mathematical elegance is that it unifies all of these formulas uh, into much more simpler ones to work with. As for the integration of forms, which is essential for the discretization, which is what we want to present in this work, like actual integration of forms is also naturally defined. So it unifies line surface and volume integrals. The generalized Stokes theorem also unifies gradient theorem and the curve theorem and the diversion theorem into one uh, very nice expression. And if you combine the Stokes theorem and Leibniz theorem, uh, this one I just presented, you actually get the integration by parse formula, which is essential for the quantum mechanics system. So all the boundary cores that actually come up in the quantum Hamiltonian framework correspond in uh, uh, contrast to the standard Hamiltonian formulations come from the integration by parse formula, and it's very elegantly uh, captured by uh, this formula for generic exterior uh, uh, So now the remarks on the difference between exterior calculus and the uh, uh, vector calculus is that the exterior calculus does not only unify the vector calculus equations but also generalize them to arbitrary dimensions and groupings. So even if you if, if you restrict yourself to 2D and 3D, there are also some for analysis purposes, some works for example by Arnold that actually show that Analyzing, for example, three dynamic systems in ND is much more uh, has actually much more advantage, technical advantages. Another important, which is actually also very important for this competition, is that all the objects I just showed so far, the, 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 the forms, the integration forms, the wedge product, and the exterior derivative, are all topological operators, and they do not depend on distances or angles at all. So they, they do not include any metric. The metric is also confined to one uh, operation, which is the, uh, the hostile uh, operator. You can define with that using the, uh, the, another operator called the co differential, and, you can, and using the combination of the exterior derivative and the co differential, you can have the generic uh, Laplace, the ramp operator, which is when, when working with the scalar field and vector fields, kind of boils down to these famous problems. Okay, so now this is just a, a crash course on exterior calculus. Just a picture of the one that I understand. Five minutes. Maximum five minutes. Maximum five minutes. Maximum five minutes. Uh, now for the exterior calculus formulation, so again, so going back, how do we present the quantum Hamiltonian models using the vector calculus? So instead of working with the vector field V and the mass density O, we're going to work with actually uh, a one form corresponding to the vector field, which, which is uh, using the uh, metric we, we contract on index, it gives us uh, one form, and using the also operator, we can define an n form, so a top form on the manifold corresponding to the mass density function. The Hamiltonian function will be given by this expression, the co-state energy, the, the co-energy values will be given by these expressions, and the power balance is be elegantly represented by the wedge corner between the, between the energy and the coordinate. Okay. So, as for the, uh, the energy dissipation, this is, this is quite complicated and Stephen will say more about it in the next talk. That actually, due to the nature of the, the, the symmetric part of the density fields and the anti-symmetric part of the tension forms, we should use now uh, covector valued forms, or in general tensor valued forms. So actually, the effort value will be a covector value n minus one form, and the flow value, which is for example the velocity gradient in general on generic manifold, corresponds to the vector value one form. And the power balance is given by a new pair. So this is not the original wedge product; it's actually a wedge dot product. And it's more complicated, but you can show in the end that you have this uh, energy uh, property. As for the, 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 the Stokes and Rock function, it's exactly the same, just written in different ways. If you don't know exterior calculus, this doesn't make sense to you, I know. But you can look at all of the details in the paper. Uh, one, one comment on the, actually, the open course, actually, the, uh, the, the pressure course, so this one actually, the pressure boundary course uses the wedge uh, pairing. So actually, the induced uh, 
risk is down the hill, which is actually the wedge drop. So in general, so just as a summary, so this one uses the wedge drop rate, this is the wedge drop rate, the rest is the wedge rate. So this is the, due to the, the nature of, of the scope game, which we will discuss. This is the generic dynamic method. Just as a wrap up for, uh, for this presentation, so presented here, I know in a lightning fashion, the short term point of the incompressible disk is provided on a generic memory manual. This is valid in 2D, 1D, 3D, on even a curved space, uh, using both vector and exterior calculus, all the ordinary basic expression, and also the transformation to go from, uh, to and from the exterior calculus formation uh, are in the paper. Uh, an important component that both, so both formations that I showed for the uh, vector calculus and the exterior calculus formations. Are coordinate free and also are valid for general, generic, arbitrary coordinate systems. However, Excel calculus can be argued to be more elegant, which is what we uh, uh, stress in this paper, due to, first of all, the minimalistic number of operators that was used, uh, the clear separation between the different parts of vector fields. So, if you use the vector calculus, you would, it's well known, for example, from electromagnetics, that you have two different types of vector fields. And this conversion is, for example, corresponds to current confirming and diff confirming uh, uh, finite elements, for example. You also have a clear separation between topological and metric operators. And you see that clearly, if you just forget about the dissipation in the boundary force, you look only on the Euler equations. You clearly see here, in, for example, in the, in the exterior type, this for the Newtonian model, that the D, 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 D appears in all of these four places, which is a topological operator, whereas the metric is compiled only to this place. So this is only the metric. The information needed on the map. Whereas in the vector calculus debate and the vector calculus formulation, the graph, the diff, and this operator corresponding to the generalization of the curl operator, all of these actually depend on the metric. So you get a combination, you get a blending between the metric and the, uh, and the, topo the metric properties and the topological properties of the operator. And this is important for structure and preserving this relation exactly, what we're working on right now. So, uh, yeah, that's the uh, end of the Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.